I'm here with Tahiri Jose from 11 Hip Hop New York. How you doing? I'm doing well. Do I have to do I have to warn my camera guys? Are we oh, about to no, get no, 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 about no. to pop off here? No, I would never pop off just like that, just because. Okay, good. Hopefully, I will not encourage <laughs> this. And, and, and no, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, we're lucky to have you. Now, I want to jump into Love and Hip Hop because you returned after taking a few seasons off. So, what? Did, what why did you decide to come back? Tenth season, OG season. It just made sense. Yeah. I, I don't think I could have watched another season go by and me just saying no to the franchise. Like, oh, no, I'm, I don't have enough drama for you. I'm doing love and basketball, maybe love and soccer. Yeah. I don't have no love and hip hop right now. Uh, and then 10th season came and I was just like, it just, everything made sense. Everything aligned itself out and it's the OG season. Like literally Chrissy, Jim, Tahiri. Uh, there's so many of us that have come back and it just made sense. When you were watching the other seasons that you weren't on, were you right. like white knuckling at home? Like, did you want to jump in and like get involved? Well, or? there were plenty of years where I watched, and um, after my experience and and everything that happened with me, season three and four, it was it was, it was happening in real time. So I had to do I had to do a lot of healing. So I'd watch, and I would get anxiety. Like I understood, I knew what went on, I know the behind the scenes. So I wasn't ready. I had to heal a little. And then eventually I was just like, all right, come on with the cartoon. It's time for us to come back. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're back, and now baby. We're back. Well, I want to talk about that last clip because you and Jonathan seem right. to be at odds because of his loyalties in Santana. Okay. What was it like that he said at the party that kind of just set you off like that? It's not his loyalty to sin that bothers me. Okay. Um, I don't think there was any reason why Jonathan, I feel that Jonathan should have picked sides. There were no sides to pick. I, I never put him under that. Uh, I never put that pressure on him. No and ultimatum. I'm sure it, yeah, no you. ultimatums at all. Because I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I believe that friendships are those that no matter how many times you see each other or how long it's been when you guys see each other, it's like you never left. Those are true friendships for me. Um, I just feel like he's going overboard. I feel like um, we've we've seen each other off, off the show. We've had coffee together. I mean, I've walked into his house and then we get on camera and lights, camera, action. So mm. I get the I get the storyline purposes. I get the fact that you know you're pressed for storyline time and you press to have another episode and get another check to pay your bills. I just have a problem with the fine line. Like when do you like not go overboard and understand that? Besides a show, there is real life and that you, we're going to see each other and that we actually had a respect for one another. So I think that he's taking it overboard. I think he's just a storyteller. And that, to me, the real to hear you, I have a hard time with that. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do that to somebody just because. You're the same off camera and on camera. Exactly. Right? Like, it doesn't matter if the red light's blinking. Exactly. And he I don't changes. Care. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like things we've spoken off camera are not the same things that happen on camera. So, to me, in a situation, and I am, when he knows the real, like, when he knows that, you know, some things that they're portraying or that's going on in the, when it comes to the show isn't true, like, it's just time to step up for me if you really do care for me as a person. Well said. Well, do you think he was premature in telling Sin that Erica Mena was trying to hook up you back up with Joe Budden? No. I don't think he was premature in telling her anything. I think he was premature oh. in the way he reacted when I said that. I felt like he didn't give me enough time to say, to have, for me to have my rebuttal. Like, so Erica's doing this, but this is how I feel, boo. Like, he didn't let me, you know, he didn't let me vibe. Like, he would necessarily let me vibe in his kitchen countertop when we sit there and we vibe and have a drink, even if it's 12 noon. Or are we having coffee? Are we talking about the gym? You know what I'm saying? Like, we've done these things. So how come on camera, you prematurely reacted and didn't give me that opportunity to say, yeah, but I'm not with the shits. Like, I'm not with what Eric is trying to do. Or I am with it. Like, you didn't give me anything. You just went zero to 100. So as a friend, he better had told Sin, because if not, I would have looked at him funny as well. Because if I see you all over the place with her, you might as well keep it real. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, one of the last times you saw, we saw you and Joe, he was proposing to you in Times Square. <laughs> Didn't go well for him. Uh, is there anything going on with the two of you now? Oh, no. Now, um, let's just say I don't know if it didn't go well for him. I think that things happen the way they should. Okay. And this is why he's moved on with Sin, and, and they have a beautiful baby boy, and that didn't work out either so far. But right now, no. I think that um, the minute we got on camera and... Um, Joe looked at me and said, oh, I haven't seen you in two years. And I said, oh, you was a liar. You was in my house. You was on my house two days ago. He was like, oh, that's what we're doing? <laughs> so the minute I started to be real and seen, yeah. and I wasn't holding any punches, he realized, like, oh, wait a minute, let me pump my brakes. 
let me skirt, skirt, stop calling Tahiri because she's not gonna, she's gonna keep it real on camera as well. And I think that Joey is an artist. No, I know he's an artist. He is now, you know, transformed into this, in the podcast world. He's doing so much and it's all about branding. I don't think he wants to look like a whack ex-boyfriend. So the fact that he's been picking up and trying to, you know, check for me, isn't right. gonna sit well on camera and he's lying and I'm keeping it real. So he stopped picking up the phone, asking me to go out to lunches and stop talking to me about certain things and I just see him in scene if we film or not. So he was a little surprised that you were keeping it real. He thought Oh, uh, like... no, nah, he knew what time it was. I think that, um, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I am really loyal, but um, I come first. So I'm not gonna allow anybody to make me look crazy when I know I'm not. Are you still celibate? Absolutely, yes, I am. This is going on for, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> poor baby. Uh, no, actually, no, you know, not poor. I am, I'm happy. Uh, Good. I think that as women, you know, as young women, especially in a game or, or as women with daddy issues or as stuff that happened in your past, you don't, you look for love in all the wrong places. And you go ahead and you just venture and you enjoy life and then you wake up and you're still empty. So what's the point of me sharing my good, good, my good vibes, my energies, even my cuddle time is very, uh, it's very, uh, I would say exquisite and not everybody deserves it. So now I'm taking my time to share time, space and bed with those people, or with that person. You know, anybody around me has to be good or a positivity in order for me to like, I wanna grow as a person. So when it comes to my good goods, uh, I am, Really sitting on finding the right person before I share it. I love that. You got standards, girl. I mean, I've learned so much already. He's going to be happy. <laughs> I got I got to ask you, would you consider Joe one of the great loves of your life? I consider Joe, I, I've always, you know, my mom told me one time that you'll love different ways, different times in your life. Like you'll, you're not only going to fall in love once. Right. Uh, and I, I listened, but now after my experiences in, in, you know, the romantic world, I, I realized that, you know, there's people that you'll love and then there's just this one person that steals your soul. Uh, and wow. I feel like Joe was one of my biggest loves and my soul I own still and nobody's has stolen it. All right. So yeah, so I consider Joe an important person in my life. I consider him someone who mattered and somebody who I grew up with and and was an intricate part of that phase of me growing up in a relationship, I would say. But you're open to love right now. I am always open to love. I think that was that's one of my biggest talents. I know I love hard.